Right. A oh, very good evening, all of you. Welcome to day three of our seven-day challenge. In this dinner session, we'll have another case-based discussion. I hope you guys are all ready. And I also hope that your day so far has been fantastic. And let's make it even more special with this wonderful, positive interaction. So I hope you guys are all ready. Uh, let's proceed with our presentation. But before that, we'll deal with yesterday's homework questions, right? Some of you have sent me mails with your work. I really appreciate your enthusiasm. And also, I've been updating all important links, article links, additional information in the description part of the respective videos. So just keep a tab on the description part of the video and give us at least 24 to 48 hours to do so. OK? So first, we'll deal with those homework questions related to yesterday's dinner session. And then we'll move on to our today's case-based discussion. And we'll use a virtual whiteboard to make note of important points, right? So day three of our seven-day challenge, just four more days to go. I'm sure we're going to maintain this consistency. So this morning, a 5 a.m. club, we had a wonderful discussion about convalescent plasma therapy. And before that, we meditated for a record 15 minutes. And then we moved on to our convalescent plasma therapy discussion. Also, we posted a question in regard to this in Telegram updates group of PDPD Academy. So I'm sure almost more than 100 members have answered this question. And almost majority of them got it right, which is uh, very good, right? And once you follow the session, I'm sure you'll be able to answer any question related to these topics with 100% confidence. So you can find related information, additional information about convalescent plasma therapy in the description part of this morning's 5 a.m. club video right here on YouTube. So yesterday, uh, I've asked you some questions like uh, what is Henry's law, what is Boyle's law, which you can see here. We try to highlight, and also we can see the reference article. It's a PubMed indexed article. So you can obviously rely on the information given over here. So in the context of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, we discussed about primary and secondary mechanisms. So Henry's law, it's nothing but, in fact, one of you rightly mentioned that the ability of a gas to dissolve in a liquid or fluid is directly proportional to its partial pressure above the liquid as you can see, right, in this context, hyperoxygenation. And also, a Boyle's law, a decrease in bubble size is possible because of this. The Boyle's law, according to which the volume of bubble decreases directly in proportion to increasing pressure and is a primary mechanism at work while treating decompression sickness or arterial gas embolism, right? So now I hope uh, you got what Henry's and Boyle's law is all about based on basic physical chemistry. And also I've asked you some questions on how this hyperbaric oxygen actually helps in wound healing. So here is the answer. Also how the, what's its role in angiogenesis, right? And also how does it act against bacteria? Why is it considered bactericidal? And why is it considered to be effective in specific against any roads? So you can find all relevant information over here about hyperbaric oxygen and its mechanism of actions in specific, right? As you can see, I've tried to highlight in red marks you can see. So you can check it out later and make a note accordingly. So this is just for your reference, right? And as I said, do not wait for me to post the answer. I, in fact, sincerely urge all of you to actually uh, try seeking information in these standard references, also in standard textbooks, right? And then get back through mail for any further queries or clarification, okay? So with this, let's conclude yesterday's portion. Now, let's move on to today's case-based question. So as you can see, a 52-year-old male patient from low socioeconomic status group presents with leonine fates Lenin faces, hypopigmented patches of the body, including on the face, as you can see in this representative illustration, multiple nodules of the face, murderosis, 
something related to eyebrows, which we'll discuss in our virtual whiteboard. And also there is collapse of nasal septum. So histologic picture is not provided, even the treatment is not provided based on the given inputs. So you can see the age of the patient, you can see the socioeconomic status, which plays a very important role in a progression of this specific disease. And also you can see the clinical features. So these are the keywords, right? So based on this, which one do you think is the most probable diagnosis? Actinomycosis, facial tuberculosis, even I mean, though these forms are very rare, even leprosy for that matter in developed nations or in developing nations where the socioeconomic status is improving and also thanks to various antibiotics, which we're going to discuss as well. We're able to uh, largely overcome these uh, pathologies. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? So I see you guys answering the question already. So first of all, orofacial tuberculosis, right? So it's considered to be a rare manifestation of extra pulmonary tuberculosis. We can see various uh, saline features of orofacial tuberculosis usually involves, if at all occurs, it involves tongue, palate, lips, oral mucosa, jaw wounds, sinuses, and even temporomandibular joint, etc. And then actinomycosis, which is another option. As you know, it's a rare chronic disease caused by actinomyces species, which is a gram-positive, anaerobic gram-positive bacteria that normally colonizes the human body. It can be mouth, digestive tract, genital tracts, etc. It can involve face actinomycosis. As you know, it can involve face, bone, joints, respiratory tract, gastrointestinal tract, CNS, skin, soft tissues, etc. The interesting thing about actinomycosis is that it can mimic tuberculosis or even malignancy or nocardosis as it spreads continuously and progressively and often forms cold abscess based on which we have a question in today's study club. Buckle up, right? So we've seen uh, in brief about actinomycosis and also orofacial tuberculosis. So as you rightly mentioned, it's leprosy. And we'll discuss some important aspects of leprosy and we'll shift to virtual whiteboards. Okay, so I'll be making notes in the process and you can join me, right? So we're switching to whiteboard. So we'll provide you some inputs regarding leprosy. My references are Bailey and Love and Manipal Manual of Surgery. Okay. So leprosy. So as you know, it's caused by bacteria. So let me just list out everything from an extreme left so that we can utilize the entire space which is available over here. So I'll uh, give you bullet points for convenience of uh, noting down or referring at a later date. So it's caused by mycobacterium leprae, right? So this is something which you're all familiar with. And this mycobacterium leprae is acid fast bacillus. Usually predisposing conditions, you know, poverty, poor hygiene, population that is overcrowding, facilitate the spread of the disease. So if you observe in the case-based question, we have incorporated this keyword as well, which is in fact a hint for you to answer the question. And also, the disease is contracted usually during childhood and adolescence as given in manipal manual surgery, and the latent period is in the range of two to five years. So that's something which I wanted to highlight. Latent period, two to five years. And Nasal secretions are the main source of infection. So main source of infection, nasal secretions. Also, there can be uh, secretions or you know, active bacilli passing through ulcers, sweat, etc. But it's the nasal secretions which are considered to be the main source of infection. And also, the leprosy predominantly affects the upper part of the body, face, nerves, and also upper respiratory tract, specifically nasal cavity. If you observe the illustration, you can see collapsed bridge of nose, right? So it specifically involves or affects skin. Let me just mention those keywords as well, skin, 
upper respiratory tract and nerves. So because of which there can be even anesthesia, the loss of sensations, which again can lead to ulcerations, right? So along with that, we have various types of leprosy. And in fact, we discussed about uh, differences between uh, tuberculoid and lepromatous leprosy in our classes as well. So to give you an overview or outline, so we have three types, that is tuberculoid, lepromatous, and borderline. So tuberculoid leprosy, lepromatous leprosy, borderline cases which can be a combination of right, uh, lepromatous or tuberculoid leprosy. So tuberculoid leprosy, as you know, it is seen in individuals with a good immunity. So that's something which we had already discussed and the differences and also for this very reason, the prognosis is good. And the most important feature is, and also the distinguishing feature between tuberculoid and lepromatous leprosy is all the clinical features which you are seeing are specifically seen in, I think you can answer this question, tuberculoid or lepromatous leprosy all the facial features which we discussed, which form of leprosy we characteristically find them. So let me know. And coming to treatment, so we have various antibiotics which are used, starting with Dapsone, which is considered as a principal drug. There is something interesting about Dapsone, which we'll discuss once we complete this uh, notes part, okay? So for treatment, we use uh, various antibiotics. I'll just list out the names of antibiotics not the regimens and all, you can refer that or get back through mail for further clarification. So Dapsone, Clofazimin, Rifampin or Rifampicin. Okay. And then, deformities in leprosy. So this is something which is very, very important, apart from surgical aspects. So deformities, when we say we need to discuss about primary as well as secondary deformities, primary involving, as we've seen, uh, skin, face, upper respiratory tract. So we'll just mention some keywords, okay? So we'll start from here. We'll start with primary deformities. So in relation to face, as we have seen, a leonine faces, lion-like appearance, which is evident in the illustration which we have seen, so leonine faces, also multiple nodules on face, hypopigmentation, pigmentation, which is clearly evident in the illustration, and murderosis. So what is murderosis? In fact, uh, we discussed this as one of the keywords in the case-based question as well, murderosis. Collapse of nasal bridge, which we are seeing, in the illustration again, collapse of bridge of a nose. Very good, Ankur. Fantastic. Collapse of bridge of nose. Yeah, due to destruction of uh, cartilages. Nasal cartilages. Because it seems to be a very favorable environment for this bacilli. Warm and moist areas. Even SARS CoV 2, for that matter. I'm talking about the respiratory system. And also there is paralysis of facial nerves, which we can add out here. And then in relation to hands, we call it claw hands. You might have seen the illustration previously, claw hands. It's because of involvement of ulnar nerve and median nerve at elbow and breast respectively. And coming to feet, foot drop is evident, also uh, clawing of toes. Clawing of toes, foot drop. So because of involvement of posterior tibial nerve and lateral hoplital nerve respectively, okay? And along with this, we have secondary deformities. Uh, in the form of loss of sensation because of involvement of nerves, as we have just discussed previously. And also there can be ulcers, penetrating ulcers, even auto-amputation, which is also one of the characteristic features, right? So secondary deformities include involvement of nerves, leading to loss of or impaired sensation, okay? Loss of sensation, 
ulcer formation on fingers, deep penetrating type of ulcers, perforating ulcers or sole of foot because of loss of sensations, and auto amputation. Okay, so these are some of the secondary uh, features. Now, let me give you some keywords uh, because uh, we're going to uh, pose them as your homework questions. So let me just extend it till here. I think it's fine. Now, let me take another text box. So in the context of correction of deformities of hands and foot, we have certain surgical procedures I wanted to find out what those procedures are, in brief at least. So correction of a deformity of hand and foot. Paul Brand's procedure. Paul Brand, in fact, uh, has uh, given a lot of contribution, especially he was, all the scientists, names which we come across, they worked in Southeastern Asian nations, especially in uh, Southern part of Asia, including in India, specifically in Avellur and all. We'll get back to that history tomorrow, which is very interesting. And in fact, these are the guys, uh, missionaries especially, who dedicated their lives for treatment of this stigma, all right? Uh, so they call uh, lepre, uh, lepers, they call these patients, they used to call these patients as lepers, but the term is uh, being discontinued and now we are using the term Hansen's disease, which you're all uh, familiar with, right? So what is Paul Brand's procedure in the context of correction of hand and foot deformities? Also, Barnell's yeah, procedure. Obers and Bars procedure. So try finding out what these procedures are. I mean, in fact, you can consider this as your homework. Okay. And so, uh, so these are some of the key points which I wanted to highlight. And also uh, the differences between tuberculoid and lepromatous leprosy, try focusing on the same, including the doses regimens of lepromatous or tuberculoid leprosy. Okay. So before we conclude, let me just summarize all that we have discussed so far. So let me just take a spotlight. So leprosy caused by mycobacterium leprae, a latent period around two to five years so before the symptoms are manifested. Main source of infection and nasal secretions affects skin, upper respiratory tract, especially nasal cavity, and also nerves, right? Because of which we have seen like uh, what could happen clinically, at least clinically. And also there are three types, tuberculoid, lepromatous, and borderline, depending upon the immunity a patient is exuding towards uh, that particular infection. And the treatment includes use of certain antibiotics, Dapson being the first line drug, like primary drug, along with clofazimine and rifampin. And the clinical features are characteristic. So as we have seen, we'll get back to that illustration in a short while. So lenine phases, multiple nodules on face, pigmentation, metarosis. So what is metarosis? Yeah, try finding out what metarosis is also all about. So let me just draw so that we can consider these as your homework questions, okay? Metarosis and also try to find out what these procedures are. Right. So collapse of bridge of nose due to destruction of nasal cartilages, or paralysis of facial nerves. Let me use stamps uh, for your convenience. So, Metarosis, Paul Brand's procedure, Bunnell's procedure, Ober's and Bar's procedure. Try finding out what these are. We'll get back to them tomorrow again. Collapse of a nasal uh, bridge, as we have just seen, paralysis of facial nerve. Hands, claw hands because of involvement of nerves, uh, which we have seen prior, and also foot leading to foot drop or clawing of toes. Secondary deformities, including ulcers, loss of sensation as a consequence, ulcers, and then even auto-amputation. So there are certain surgical procedures, correction of face as well as hand and foot. So these are the procedures which I've listed. Try finding out, okay? This is very important. That is to wear a beautiful smile always. So now let's shift our slides once again, and then look into that illustration. 
I'm sure you already answered it right. So a 52 year old male patient with low socioeconomic status. Now you must be understanding why the keyword has been presented. With the clinical feature of leonine fades or faces, hyperpigmented patches, multiple nodules of the face, medorosis, collapse of nasal septum. So what could be the diagnosis? Loss of lateral portion of eyebrows, medorosis. So you answered it rightly as leprosy. And also we have seen some of the uh, clinical features and also information about orofacial tuberculosis, actinomycosis, and try to find out those homework questions as well. We'll start a discussion tomorrow with those surgical procedures and consider them very, very important. Along with that, also consider the differences between uh, lepromatous and tuberculoid leprosy is important, okay? In fact, uh, you must have been familiar uh, with those things by now. And before I come to it, as I said, I have some interesting information to share about Daxon. The person who discovered this uh, was awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine way back in 1939. He was a German physician and his name is Gerhard Domak, D-O-M-A-G-K, Domak, right? So G is silent, I reckon. So Daxon, which is a derivative of Prontosil Red, which is a red ejodite was discovered by Gerhard Domark, who is a German physician and was awarded Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine way back in 1939, okay? And also we have a few more scientists, lead scientists, who contributed for uh, enormously for uh, helping humanity eliminating this uh, infection. So we'll discuss all those interesting things uh, further tomorrow. So try finding out I think I've answered one of the questions, my process. Try finding out those surgical procedures and do get back to me. Do not wait for, uh, for me to answer. That's it. So I really appreciate your active participation. Exactly. Uh, very good, Nedi Vaishak. Yes. So, uh, so before I conclude, all I wanted to remind you guys is, yes, there are times where we feel uh, very negative, very low, very demotivated. But uh, right in here, we all have the tremendous source of positivity. The only question here is not about finding positivity, but the real question here is, are we willing to seek for the same? And if yes is the answer to that question, no matter what the challenges are, no matter what the situations are surrounding you, you will eventually overcome them. And no matter what's happening out there, Remember, it's only temporary. We definitely are going to have good, bright, wonderful, amazing days in the form of tomorrow. So let's hope for the best. And also, I've been getting several mails uh, saying that relatives, closed uh, family members, that's for you guys are losing your loved ones, which is very unfortunate. All I would suggest to you is to be strong and save yourself and your family members in the process. So for any further queries or assistance, feel free to get back through mail 24 by 7 and give us at least 24 to 48 hours to address all your queries or concerns. With courage in heart and smile on face, I'm sure we can face anything in life. Wish you all the best. Love you all.